Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew and today we're talking about the 1440p network. No, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah, 1440p is the Walmart 4K, but it's great. It's great. Like it really is great. Um, that's why I have decided, you know, going forward with this channel, um, I will dabble in the 4K stuff as well. Like I will, I will eventually get to a point where, um, I can put out, you know, 4K content as well. But I think for the uh, for the for the nature of this channel um, being a console channel and all, I think that we're gonna try to stay stay around the 1440p range, and that is just over extensive testing over the last few months since I've gotten a you know the 1440p monitors. I've I've got the PC. I've I've uh, I've invested heavily in in this setup. To a point where, I mean, like, I don't have, like, the top of the line stuff by any means, but I got enough of this stuff to where it is, I I feel that 1440p is actually going to be a pretty decent fit for this channel, and I believe that that is going to, it's going to help flesh out 1440p as an option for a lot, of, lot, a lot of gamers out there, because let's face it, 1440p for these consoles really is the walmart 4k like it really is a walmart 4k um most of these games you know going forward on these consoles i envision um pretty much anything from 1296p up to like 1600p in the performance modes um and then when you get into you know i mean that's like like well i'm gonna say 1800p 1800p 1296p up to 1800p for 60 fps um, some games, you know, your shooters, you're still going to get 4k. So those, I will still cover at 4k, but everything else in between that, um, like open world games, stuff like that, things that I know we're not going to, that are, that are going to be sub 4k, but anywhere from just under 1440p to above 1440p, we will cover those in the best way possible to bring you the best content and the best way to, to experience that content. Uh, when it comes to um, anything in the 120 FPS range, you are looking at from 1080p um, to just possibly above 1440p, depending on the game and the uh, and the world dynamics and stuff. Like if you look at a game like like Deathloop that just recently came out, this game here is running at 1080p in the 120 frames, uh, 120 hertz mode on 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 both consoles. So that makes covering that kind of stuff on a 1440p uh basis a lot more a lot more consistent with what the image would look like on a 1440p monitor uh it is it is it is interesting times we live in when it comes to video games i've been playing i've been a console gamer since since i was five years old i've been playing on the consoles and it's always been traditionally hooked to a, to a television i never in my life imagined getting my console and hooking it up to a monitor like i never imagined that uh just like i'm pretty sure most of you in the gaming community have never imagined doing that either you're like oh yeah tv and you go out and you buy a tv and let's let's face it man you can get 4k tvs pretty cheap nowadays but you get what you pay for you get what you pay for if you buy a cheap tv you're gonna get what you pay for you're gonna get 4k at 60 frames and it's gonna be a edge lit freaking hdr so it's not even going to be it's not even going to be good and you're going to pay 500 bucks for that or if you're getting like if you're if you're a gamer and you're in the market for anything from a 32 inch to a 55 inch might i suggest a 32 inch monitor not only is it going to be less than what you would pay for that entry level 4k tv with edge lit display you're also going to be able to take advantage of the 120 hertz you'll be able to hook you can run your consoles at a 4k signal to that 1440p monitor and it will down sample and give you better image quality at a faster response time like i never knew this existed and that's why i'm excited about it and i want to bring you the ultimate best way to get the most out of your gaming experience that i can that's what this channel is designed for to save you money and to help you have a better experience now, I'm not saying to go out and throw away your 4K TV. If you're already invested in a 4K TV, that's fine. That is 100% fine. You've already invested the money. But if you just, like I said, if you have one of them sub, if you have one of those edge lit displays for your HDR, if you have one of them, you know, like a Vizio 
V series or, or D series or whatever they're freaking called nowadays, the entry level ones from TLC or Hisense or Vizio or any of these companies that are competing for your dollars that are selling you something that seriously shouldn't even be on the market, shouldn't even be on your mind for a gaming TV. Like it shouldn't, especially with these new consoles. You're going to want the 120 hertz. You're going to want, I know, I know you're probably thinking in your mind, like I was thinking in my mind when I first started this channel, I was like, man, I'm going to be running everything through my capture card at 60 frames a second anyway. So do I really need a uh, 120 Hertz? The simple answer is yes. Yes, you do need that. But I bought the OLED for 1300 bucks. I bought the monitor for, for, for 489 bucks. The experience between both of these is so freaking close it's not even funny yes i get deep dark inky blacks with my oled and i get amazing dolby vision but i also get dark good contrast ratio with my monitor either way like i feel like it's comparable enough to where i'm like wow you know what man that looks really good on the monitor that looks really good on the freaking oled like certain games are going to look better but I, not everybody has the money to go out and buy an expensive OLED and then buy a monitor and have, you know, two different competing screens that, but I'm telling you, if you are somebody that just needs to game on a budget, you just want to game on a budget. I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you look into 1440p monitors before you consider getting any 4k TV, because let's face it, anything under $800 in a 4k TV is going to be a substandard subpar experience like it just is and i know that i know that literally from experience my my i was i was a vizio m series guy i was like yeah man these are these are more bang for your buck they got full array local dimming they got dolby vision support it had all of the bells and whistles for the xbox one x but then these new consoles come out and you're like oh man well yeah i guess i can get the m series but i now i need to upgrade from 55 to 65 inch to be able to take advantage of the 120 fps display but little did i know that when you kick in that your vrr support and you kick in 120 hertz it turns off your full array local dimming so you are you're getting a substandard experience no matter which way you go when you get a tv the only way you're going to get an ultimate experience is oled oled is not cheap they do cost money and you will pay a premium to use your consoles that let's face it are not going to give you that experience <laughs> they're not gonna you're, you're not gonna ever ever on these consoles are you ever unless you're playing ori will of the wisp are you gonna get a 4k 120 hertz very few games are gonna get that and then trust me they're not gonna be the ones that you're gonna be like oh yeah proud to show everybody on your tv ori is a beautiful game but it is so few far, few and far between that you're going to need 4K at 120 hertz on either of these consoles ever in this generation unless they do come out with them pro consoles. So that's why we are 100% focused on trying to help you get the most bang for your buck. All of the other, I mean, there's there's some other TV technology that's coming out right now too. You've probably heard of mini LED. You've probably heard of, you know, the... All, all the all the little names and gimmicky names that, they, that they're putting out with all of these all of these tvs from what i'm hearing from what i'm seeing from what i'm what i'm what i'm hearing from other people is any of these lcd tvs they are severely limited uh when it comes to being able to use your vrr like you can't use everything at once and be okay like the lg oleds i know that you can use 120 hertz i know you can use dolby vision with that but i mean even my vizio is stuck at 60 frames if i want the dolby vision and then the dolby vision kicks in more latency you get more latency with that none of these tvs are going to be perfect for that you want dolby vision at high frame rates you're going to get the you're, you're going to get the latency uh, being able to use your vrr support uh <laughs> That's that's another thing, man. If you're if you're getting an edge lit or um, or full ray local dimming, and you're losing that lo that local dimming for your HDR, it's gonna destroy your picture. You're like, yeah, you're gonna get the response times or whatever. You're gonna get the VRR and all of that, but you are gonna severely limit your experience regardless. Now on the monitor, on the 1440p monitor, I get all my HDR. I don't lose any kind of clarity whatsoever when I switch to 1440p 120 frames a second mode. I don't lose any contrast ratio. I don't lose any brightness. I don't lose anything. It is a better experience right out of the gate. Now, uh, with the PlayStation 5, 
you're not going to be able to use your VRR unless you have a monitor with 2.1. You have to have 2.1 HDMI for your VRR to work on your PlayStation 5. So be very picky and very careful when you are sourcing the monitor to buy for your PlayStation 5. The Xbox Series X and S, huh, dude, they're seamless. They work with all of them. They work really good. Uh, you plug in your, um, the biggest thing with the Xbox though, is you are not going to get, um, the HDR at 120 frames a second because you have to leave 4k enabled. If you leave that enabled, then it doesn't let you do the 120 for some weird reason on, on the monitor. It just doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to work. It, it, uh, automatically kicks you back down to the, um, and which is weird, which is really weird. I don't understand why that's like that. They they should have a way. They they they, sh they need to fix that. But everything else works just fine. You can get your 1440p. You can get your 120 frames. And that's that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about because the way that these monitors handle handle SDR content is different than your standard TV. Like you still get your good contrast ratios. You still get like the, the, the better color palettes, all of that stuff. It still looks really good. It doesn't look SDR. Like it doesn't look SDR on a 1440p monitor. And at least in my experience with the LG um, Ultra Gears, I am not running into that problem with either of these. I could play SDR content. I could play HDR content either way. I mean, but you're not getting a really high peak brightness. You're getting about 400 nits on, on these monitors, which is at two feet away. That that's perfectly fine. Like it's, it's, it's actually okay. It's probably better on your eyes too, because it's not like super bright. Um, when you get up into like 600 nits, stuff like that, you get closer, it kind of gets a little bit brighter. So that's basically why I am going to, you know, start really, continuing to to talk about 1440p as this channel goes goes forward i think that can kind of be my my niche uh to us to a certain extent i want to bring as much awareness to the gaming community as i possibly can because let's face it if you had an xbox one s or an xbox one x did you know those consoles both supported H, uh, vrr they supported hdr I meant, um, they, they both supported VRR support. So if you had those and you had a hook to a monitor, you could have been enjoying all of those games. You wouldn't have had any, any frame drops. And, and it does go all the way down to 40, which also allows you to use low frame rate compensation on your Xbox one S and your Xbox one X. And you didn't know that. Why? Because the professionals, the people that we look to, to tell us all of everything we need to know about our performance of games and everything. They were so wrapped around PlayStation's finger that they never, they never talk about any of this stuff. They never talk about anything that freaking matters that would save you money and that would make your experience better because I guarantee it. Had I known what I know now, when I had my Xbox One X, I would have definitely had a monitor for that. I would have never even played around with these. I would have just went and bought a 1440p monitor. And I would have been off to the races. Or I probably would have got a 4K monitor back then because it was like, oh my gosh, 4K. But I'm telling you, 1440p monitor is the welfare version of 4K. Like it, it's 1440p is the welfare 4K. Like it really is. Welfare 4K. Everything looks sharp, crisp, beautiful. And you still get all of you get all of your features and you never have to lose any of your your clarity. Like your clarity's there. Another big selling point for me, this is what literally took it over the freaking top for me, was my backward compatible games. Yeah, the ones that are 900p, 1080p, the ones that are you know old and didn't get any upgrades, but they got FPS boost and stuff like that. Even those look good on your 1440p monitor. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, go put a 900p game on your 4K TV and you tell me if that looks good to you. And then you go put it on a 1440p monitor and you tell me, like, wow. That's actually playable. It doesn't look all blurry and fuzzy and, and trash. Like it looks, it doesn't look pristine clear like all the 1440p games or the 4K games getting down downscaled, but it looks good enough to give you a solid experience. So <laughs> that's probably the biggest, that's one of the biggest things, man. I All of my games have new life now on this 1440p monitor. I love my OLED. I do. I love my OLED. But for these consoles, I feel like 1440p is literally the perfect. It, it's it's perfect. Um, the smaller screen helps you with eye hand coordination a lot. I've I've noticed that I've gotten a lot better playing on a monitor than I was playing on the TV. 
uh, the, the, the response time, see the response time is, is pretty different. Like the, the, uh, this has got a one millisecond response time. So does that OLED though. They're, they're both like, they're both good when it comes to like latency and stuff like that. So what, 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 what it, what it, what it basically boils down to is now my games look incredible all the time. Whereas sometimes some games are going to look questionable on your 4k screen, and you're going to be like, oh, man, the 1440p is 100% a perfect fit. Perfect fit for your PlayStation 5. You've noticed, if you've been with this channel for a while, I, I'm not as hard on my PlayStation 5 anymore since I got into that beta and I was able to start using the 1440p. I'm very happy with that now. And, yeah, the PlayStation 5 to me is a 1440p console, and it's fine. The uh, Xbox Series S is an entry-level 1440p console. It looks it looks just fine on the 1440p monitor and the series x man that one for me is inter interchangeable with my 4k screen and my and my monitor because i can get you know fairly fairly close to 1800p on my xbox series x more often than i can on my playstation 5 so for me that uh 1440p is really the base they that you should be trying to use on a 4k screen anyways like I, I everything else from that it just starts to deteriorate and it it's not as it's not as good of a looking experience whereas the xbox usually holds that so i i feel like the xbox is a better fit um and that's not me taking a shot at the playstation 5 i just feel like the xbox series x proven xbox series x in my in my opinion it has been a better 4k experience than the playstation 5 i'm 100 happy with the playstation 5 1440p um the xbox series x when i put it on my 1440p monitor it is incredible but i also like my dolby vision so it's one of those things where oh you know what i mean like you just kind of have to pick what one is going to be the best for you so that's basically all I really have to say about this um, today, but I will be making more content. I will produ be producing more 1440p content to show you. I do recommend that you watch that on a 1440p screen. Um, I will encode it with the highest bitrate possible so that when you do watch it on a 4K screen, it will look essentially better because it'll be like the downscaled 4, 4K version that'll kind of just upscale a little bit. It will... It'll look better because it doesn't have to upscale as much. And I have tested this on my 4K screen with some of the videos I put out recently. And it does actually look better than watching like a native 1440p video uh, that, that, that's rendered from a 1440p game on the, on the 4K. Because that, that will just make it look like it like it normally would at 1440p. But the other ones that are 4K, it kind of upscales. It, it, it just works, trust me. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next one. If you like this content, don't forget to like it, subscribe. And yeah, I'll definitely see you in the next one.